I got a hurricane headed right at me, but that's not going to stop me from talking about week 10, the waivers, the bold predictions, the lock, the not so obvious lock for week 10. Let's get into it right now. You are now listening to the Rival Fantasy Sports Podcast. Let's go. Welcome to the Rival Podcast. I'm your host, Neil Maligno. It is week 10 of the fantasy football season and the NFL season, of course. But we are talking about fantasy football here. We have waivers to look at. We have bold predictions. We have the not-so-obvious lock of the week. We have so much to get into. Let's jump right in because, like I said, I got this thing called a hurricane coming right at me. And we got to make sure that we uh, get this out before who knows my power cuts off or something. I got to get my roster set for Thursday. I got to make sure I'm up on top of everything before... Things get crazy, but hey, if you're in the path of the hurricane, I know it's only a hurricane, you know, one level one out there, but stay safe, do the right thing, be smart, don't get caught up out there doing anything crazy. Week 10 waivers, let's get to it right now. Greg Dolchis, Mr. Unlimited, is finally finding himself a tight end he likes in Denver. It's happening, folks. It is a rookie tight end. I know people are a little sketchy about rookie tight ends, but this is legit. This is for real. He's had back-to-back, or he's had some good games this year so far, and is getting he's heating up right now, right? Like, it started off slow. I know he had a couple of issues coming into the season. There's a couple of other guys. People were trying to figure out who was going to find their way to be Mr. Unlimited's tight end of choice, and Greg has become the guy. Get him in your get him on your team if he's available in waivers. Uh, obviously in dynasty, he's probably not available, of course. But if you're in redraft leagues and you're and you're kind of struggling, I have a I have a league in redraft where I had Taysom Hill, and he's so up and down. He's good, he's bad, he's doing all this weird stuff. I never know what's gonna happen week to week. So I picked up Greg. I'm gonna play him this week for sure. 100 percent Will my luck Taysom Hill Hill will go off, but that's okay. I'm putting faith in this guy. Uh, if you haven't picked him up yet, for sure go pick him up. Definitely worth it. He's the one tight end that I would say is the clear pickup for me this week. Jeff Wilson already looks comfortable down there in Miami. It's a new home, but it's familiar faces. You know, he's familiar with the coach. He's familiar with a bunch of his teammates down there. He 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 did really well his first game. I thought it would take a little bit. I I, I was taking a wait and see approach to see how quickly uh, he got acclimated there. Obviously, again though, he's super familiar with the team, so it's not surprising. Um, that he took off. He wasn't in my surprise column last episode because of that. So I would get him in your lineups if you have him. If he, if he's available, pick him up for sure. This is a guy who may be available, may not be after he got traded. Some people may have you know picked up on it then. But again, Jeff Wilson definitely deserves to be in your lineups. Definitely deserves to be on your team. He's definitely flex worthy for sure. Terrace Marshall starting to flash. It's really happening. It's really happening. DJ Moore, of course, is the number one wide receiver with the Panthers. But it's, you're not going to start to ignore a guy like Marshall at this point. He's having big weeks. He's flashing. The Panthers clearly trust him. They need more weapons. It, it makes total sense in every way. Some people didn't really like him coming into the year. Um, they just didn't have a lot of faith in him. It's been kind of a slow process. But we know the Panthers have been mixing things up there, right? So they've been changing the players around there, moving guys, trading guys, bringing different guys up. It's his moment. So it's starting to happen. This this is definitely one you want to believe in. We did talk about last episode about some players and wide receivers specifically dealing with injuries, having really slow starts right now. I shouldn't say slow starts, but bad weeks. The season didn't just start. Bad weeks, injuries, uh, quarterback problems, coaching problems like the Colts. This is a great player for you to pick up right now. Let me give you a couple. Terrace Marshall is a good wide receiver for you to pick up right now and just plug straight in. Um, McCole Hardman, fantastic. Again, this guy's just balling with Patrick Mahomes right now. It's legit. It's a real thing. I know in the past, it's been kind of like cons- inconsistent. We weren't sure, like, is he just flashing? Is he just having a game? It was hard to kind of pinpoint when Hardman would have a good game. Now it's flowing more consistently. So this is a good one for sure. So Terrace Marshall, McCall Hardman, and then just a flyer that you want to put out there. I always say to get ahead of these things. It may be too late if people are, are starting to pick up on the news and everything, but Odell Beckham looks like he's going to be signed soon. I would I would think and predict the Cowboys from you know kind of the stuff that's going around, but he's worth putting on your team. I know you're like Neil. He hasn't really done a whole lot. <laughs> he got hurt really bad, and why? Are you? But again, we got to take these chances. We got to take these shots. Fortune favors the bold. You got to do this. So Marshall will be my first. Well, Hardman, Marshall, and that. Well, Marshall or Hardman, whoever you're feeling more. I personally would say that. Um, you know, Hardman's in the more 
explosive offense. So I, I would probably favor him. But Marshall, I'm, I'm all in on for sure. So I like Marshall a lot as well. And then Beckham, if neither one's available or you have an extra spot, that's the guy that I would just take a flyer on. I don't feel as confident in him as I do the other two at all. If you're looking for running back help, my main one right now is Latavius Murray. I'm not crazy about him. I'm not crazy about any running back in Denver. However, he has gotten enough work. He has gotten enough touchdowns the last couple of games. So if you're in a bad spot, if you had lost Brees Hall earlier in the year and you still haven't figured it out, you're dealing with bye week stuff, things get crazy. I understand that. A guy like Latavius Murray is a great fill-in uh, for those kind of things. Or if you just need to flex, uh, you lost some other players and some other positions and you need to flex, Latavius Murray can definitely be counted on. Um, he seems to keep getting these touchdowns every week, which is, is helping a lot because overall, sharing the workload and everything, and it's not really a really great offense, running offense in Denver as it is, the touchdowns have been saving them. But it's worth considering for sure if you need them. There's so many good quarterbacks right now, so obviously you should have good options for bye weeks. Uh, I told you weeks ago about Deshaun Watson. If you haven't done it already, you're probably too late at this point. You should have listened weeks ago when I said it. If you haven't, but if he is still there, pick him up. I'm telling you, like, there's no reason to not stash him at this point. But there's so many good quarterbacks. If you're in a redraft league with a one quarterback that you start, there's going to be quarterbacks available week to week. So it's not, you know, it's not something you're super pressured by. You could always pick up players looking at bye weeks. Look, look for your quarterback's bye week. If you have like a stud, you have a Joe Burrow type, look for his bye week, which is this week. Pick up a guy who, who makes sense to fill in for him at Daniel Jones. I like versus Houston this week. So these are the kind of fill-ins and, and swaps you want to do, but you got to do them ahead of time before people are catching on. So that's even, you know, advice, quarterback advice for, you know, short, smaller leagues or uh, one quarterback leagues. There's still these moves, these strategies to play out. Don't be so, I don't want to say the word basic, but don't be so um, confident and, and simple with the maneuvers here because I know it's a smaller league. You get caught sleeping, you get caught lacking. So don't do that. Even if the league is smaller, it seems slower. Don't get caught in that. Don't be the don't be the person picking up players right before the games and, and making all these last minute decisions. Get ahead of it. You should have, you have no reason not to. But again, lots of good quarterbacks happening right now, so you shouldn't be in a jam. Covered tight end, covered running back, covered wide receiver, covered quarterback. I feel good about the waivers there. If you have any questions about waiver moves, drop them in the comments below. I get a. I, it's probably the question we get the most besides start sit or like you know I have these three players. Which one would you start? Besides those, waivers are probably the most common questions we get in the comments, so definitely drop them there below. I'm, I'm speaking to my YouTube audience here, of course, for that. If you're not on YouTube and you're just listening to the podcast on you know, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, again, you feel free to, to follow on social if that's easier for you, Rival Fantasy on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. But if it's not, if you're not watching the video because you're driving when you're listening or you're at work and, and you know, like, can't have video up here, I get it. It still will be smart to to create an account on YouTube if you don't already have one, subscribe to the show, and then still just speak in the comments. You don't have to watch the show on there. You can still listen how you always do, but just get in the comments and chop it up there because that's where I answer the most questions. The alert system, I'm on YouTube a lot. It's just easier. But if you do um, follow on the social platforms, let me know that you're listening to the show. This way I remember to follow you back and it's easier for me to catch the mentions and stuff when they come through. Um, so that's it for waivers for week 10. Bolt predictions for week 10. Spanked by the Saints. Lost to the Jags, who are on like a five-game losing streak. Would be calling my Raiders a lock versus I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know the Raiders are playing the Colts, who have a new head coach who's never coached in the NFL in his life, a new offensive play caller who's never called plays in his life, a quarterback who's never won games in the NFL. I'm just kidding. They're gonna win. So if you have Raider players, get them in your lineup. It's not a bold prediction. It, I would say that it may be bold to, if you have Colt players, not put him in your lineup. Michael Pittman, even Jonathan Taylor's a risk, but how are you not going to start him, right? Like, there's not really a, a situation where that matters. So I would get Jonathan Taylor in your lineup. But if you have a Michael Pittman, it, it's concerning at this point with the quarterback and the play callers. It is risky as hell at this point. I know the Raiders suck on defense. They give up big plays. Guys like Michael Pittman should flourish in a normal situation against them, but it is risky. So if you have a Terrace Marshall, I would start him over Michael Pittman. I would. You have a Cole Hardman, I would start him over Michael Pittman. You got Michael Pittman's got to show it for me now with the Colts, with this new staff before I'm going to start making this gamble again for him. Uh, bold prediction, Geno Smith will beat Tom Brady. He will outplay Tom Brady in this game from a fantasy perspective and win the game. That's right. Never thought I would speak those words into existence. Geno Smith better than Tom Brady. Not career-wise, guys. Don't get crazy. 
But for week 10, that's what's happening. That's what's going to happen. Geno Smith will beat Tom Brady, and he will outperform him in fantasy for you. Uh, Justin Fields. Neil, he's only through for a little over 100 yards. What what what, how, what bold prediction can you have for him? My bold prediction is he'll probably throw for 100 some yards again. Maybe get closer to 200, but he's going to throw for three touchdowns in back-to-back weeks. This week versus the Lions, Justin Fields, three touchdowns, close to 200 passing yards, a little obviously less rushing than last week in my opinion, but I, I, I feel bold saying three passing touchdowns for Justin Fields. That's a bold statement just because the way the guy plays right now, but Justin Fields, closer to 200 yards, 200 yards passing, three touchdowns passing. He's going to do it in back-to-back weeks, I promise. I, I'm all in on Justin Fields, if you could tell at this point. So you should be too. Uh, my last bold prediction for Week 10, Tony Pollard will outscore Zeke in fantasy. If Zeke is back, he's healthy, all this kind of stuff. I don't care about Jimmy Jones. Jimmy Jones? I don't care about, I don't care about, why am I, I don't care about the Cowboys owner. I don't care about the Cowboys coach. I don't care about the Cowboys play caller. Tony Pollard needs more snaps. Tony Pollard is the more explosive player. Tony Pollard is the better running back. I don't care how confident they are in him. In Zeke, Tony Pollard will outscore him in fantasy this week. Book it. If Zeke is healthy and playing, I don't care. Tony Pollard is the better running back. I'm going to get him in every episode, folks. Whether it's a bold prediction, whether it's a waiver, whether it's a not-so-obvious lock of the week, I'm going to find a way. Tony Pollard, who balled out. Balled out. Go check the history. Go check previous episodes. Go check the shorts. I keep telling you, Tony Pollard will finish the season as a better quarterback, as a better running back. Quarterback? As a better running back than Zeke Elliott. That is it for bold predictions for week 10. On to my not so obvious lock for week 10. Not so obvious lock of the week. Again, for anyone new watching, not so obvious lock of the week is a player who's not obvious, <laughs> clearly, to be a must start in your team, a must flex on your team and he has to score at least 10 points in PPR scoring for him to be considered a successful not so obvious lock of the week the guy I'm going to go with is a guy who I've talked about a lot today actually Terrace Marshall for the Panthers he will get his third week in a row with 10 plus points so although he's had two already prior to this it's not it hasn't been obvious right like he has just not it's not that situation yet uh he's not DJ Moore he's not a one of these wide receivers who you feel like are a lock to get targets But he's the guy who I feel like with DJ Moore being there, he's not going to see a lot of double coverage or any double coverage. I feel like he's a guy with the with the running back situation there. They're going to give him enough, you know, uh, teams are going to respect those guys enough to make sure that they have to fear the run. Um, PJ Walker has just had the offense a little more fluid and making guys more relevant. And so I feel like Terrace Marshall is a good option here in in week 10 for you to get in your lineups. He's my not so obvious lock of the week, 10 plus points for Terrace Marshall. That's it, guys. That's it for today's episode. Like I said, I got this this hurricane coming. I got to get prepared. So if the episode feels a little short, that may be why. Maybe that's why. It is what it is. You guys know where to hit me. Uh, so if you have any questions, I really enjoy chopping up with you guys. Like I say, every single week in the comments, you guys have been awesome. The, the momentum has been great. Uh, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the show and enjoying just conversating with us and, and, and also the app that you're enjoying the, the, the website, uh, Rival Fantasy. But shout out to you guys. The community here at Rival is amazing. Um, again, giving advice in the comment section, talking football, being held accountable, debating, agreeing, whatever it is. It's by far where we have the most action. Join us there. Subscribe to the YouTube so you don't miss not just the episodes, but the, the dialogue in the comments. If you're all watching on, on YouTube, again, subscribe, turn the notifications, do all that good stuff because we're family here. You guys are amazing. You guys have been doing a great job helping us get to uh, more and more people every single week and, and helping others in fantasy. Shout out to the listeners on the uh, podcast uh, apps and platforms. I always say Apple Podcasts and Spotify, but if you're listening somewhere else, shout out to you still. Um, leave a review on whatever app you're watching on if you can. This helps us with the algorithm, you know, getting out to new audiences. Just Again, the goal here is to grow as much of a community as we can, help each other as much as we can. I even like in the comment section a lot of these things and in the uh, social media as well. You guys are like helping each other, not even just me, you know, talking to you guys and us going back and forth, but you guys also jumping into other people's conversations. It's great. Uh, again, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Rival Fantasy. We do a lot of different content on there, a lot of shorts for the from the from the from the YouTube and the podcast, but also just a lot of different other content as well. If there's anything you'd like to see that you haven't seen, you know, this this season so far, let us know. We can definitely add it into the show. 
Uh, if you have questions for the show, we can definitely add that as well. Just let me know when you post the question, um, Neil, please answer this on the show. Because I always tend to just jump straight in and answer it. I can't help myself. But if you want it specifically for the show, we'll shout you out and ask your question on the show. Maybe other people have the same question. Uh, visit rivalfantasy.com, create an account, make a deposit, and you will be 100 you have 100% loss protection up to $50. It's another layer of competition. It's another way to have fun while watching the games. Fantasy bingo, uh, rival challenges, all kinds of stuff to do. We don't have just NFL on there. We also have NBA, all that good stuff. But NFL, obviously, is what's popping right now. It's what we're doing here. Um, other than that, guys, I will catch you on the next episode or in the YouTube comments or on social. That is it today. I am out. Oh, 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 o